Greetings everyone, I'm Karen Jane Casey and this is Turn to God with Karen. In this podcast, we talk about ways to overcome life challenges. We have hope for the brokenhearted and for healing and we look for a good future. During this 15 minute episode, there will not be any lecturing down at you, there will not be any yelling and preaching at you because I am just simply sharing what I've learned and what I'm still learning in my journey. We learn together, and I encourage you to share what you've learned. Your testimony is important, and someone does need to hear it. Let's start out by praying together. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you for all that you've done in our lives and all that you've brought us through. You are our strength and refuge in any time of trouble. Lord, we ask you, we pray that you will save, heal, and protect all of our loved ones, all of their loved ones, our friends, our acquaintances, our community. We pray for our country, Lord. We know that with God, all things are possible. Please forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And Lord, we thank you for your love, your compassion, and your mercy, and for your grace through Jesus Christ. And Lord, please help me now as I speak and give me the words to say that are wise, kind, and healing. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, today's episode is a serious matter, victims of self-loathing. Let's break it down for victims of self-loathing. If the internet definition for victim would include a person harmed injured or killed as a result of a crime, an accident, or other event or action, such as the victim of domestic violence. Well, we all know what that's about. Symptoms might, synonyms might include sufferers, injured party, or wounded person. The antonyms, or the opposite, would be attacker or assailant. That's the opposite of victim. Here, the victim is a victim of themselves, so they are both the attacker and the wounded person. Another definition of victim is a person who is tricked or duped. And how did we trick ourselves into being a victim by ourselves? Did we have help in getting there? So what is the definition of loathing? It's a strong dislike or disgust, an intense aversion. What a horrible thing to tack on to oneself. But it happens. When a person has a great dislike or disgust towards themselves, they are causing themselves to fall victim to self-loathing or to self-hatred. Self-loathing or self-hatred doesn't usually happen suddenly, but it develops over a period of time. It may begin as the result of a traumatic event, an exaggerated, out-of-balance expectation of oneself, maybe perfectionism. It could be the result of comparing ourselves with others. Or maybe we've learned it from people who we love and respect, maybe from our childhood even. The implication being that we just didn't quite measure up, we are failures, we're not enough, and we believed it. There's many reasons we arrive at self-loathing. At some point, we have brought in to a set of negative, bought into a set of negative thoughts and feelings about ourselves. Our primary way to dis- demonstrate this belief is through negative self-talk. This is when we make a mistake or we don't accomplish something of our own liking and we think or say ugly negative remarks to ourselves that include words similar to stupid, failure, loser, horrible things. What is it that we say to ourselves when no one else is around? Do we build ourselves up or do we tear ourselves down? Do we believe we deserve no better treatment? And why would that be? Do we feel guilt and shame over something that happened in the past? Or are we falling into an agreement with what someone else believes or has said about us? 
Regardless of how we've arrived at this, we have become victim to an enemy's that's inside of us, our own thoughts and beliefs, and that can be changed. I can sincerely relate to self-loathing. As a child, I was deep in child abuse, and as is typical, as an adult, I fell into domestic violence, a similar pattern. So I had many years of hearing, watching, and feeling, believing negatives that were projected upon me by other people, people that should have loved me. After a period of time being exposed to negative, toxic environment and mean-spirited people, I began to believe and to agree with what they saw in me. I was unloved, not enough, stupid, and so on. And my thoughts, my words, and my actions reflected these things about myself. Negative self-talk happens, and it affects every area of our life such as in the workplace. Promotions are not going to be sought after by people with low self-esteem, low confidence. Even in a spiritual life, how does one perceive God to feel about, about them when everyone else has been negative? Everyone else that should have loved them has been negative. Then they perceive God to be judgmental and con con condemning as well. My perception, my view about myself and the world was negative and toxic. If you've heard my testimony, then you know that I allowed myself to remain with an abuser who repeatedly tortured me, abused me in various ways, and even tried to kill me. Finally, I came to a point where I could not bear it any longer, and I cried out to the Lord. I was humble. I was desperate. I prayed for forgiveness. Before getting into this life-threatening situation, I had turned my back on the Lord, and I was living a sinful life. Can anyone relate to that? And I prayed for rescue. I would not survive that toxic environment, the abuse, much longer. And I prayed for my salvation. I knew the scriptures from childhood. I knew that Jesus, the Son of God, had suffered on the cross for me, for my sins, and that he arose. I knew that Jesus was the way, the only way. This is the first step to overcome any challenge in life, including self-loathing, to turn to God for forgiveness, for rescue, and for your salvation. I did accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But my journey had just begun. What was the next step? Leave that negative, toxic environment maybe even a dangerous environment. And this means to stop being around those people who have been ne negative, mean-spirited, with their opinions, beliefs, and words that they say, and who, who acted with malice. We no longer should be in agreement or even hear or feel their condemnations and malicious actions over our lives. When we turn to God with a humble, contrite heart, we are forgiven for our sins and for our past. It is gone. Don't allow others to continue to judge and condemn then and mistreat. Of course, if we're talking about domestic violence, to leave could be very dangerous. We need to have an escape plan with experts. Please know that you are not alone. It is not your fault and you can get help. If it's an emergency, dial 911. The National Domestic Violence Hotline number is 1-800-799-7233. Safe. 1-800-799-7233. As we free ourselves of those who promote negatives in our lives, free ourselves from that influence of mean-spirited people, we can then be selective and pursue an environment that is positive, kind, and safe. We can deliberately, deliberately gravitate towards peaceful, positive surroundings with people who will be encouraging and blessing us. The next step is to have faith and believe. 
This applies to a change from our own mindset, our own negative thoughts, words, or actions against ourselves. We can make that decision. The perception may have been, I'm not enough. I'm undeserving. I'm not worthy. I'm stupid. I'm a failure. There's so many other negatives. But now that we've turned to God, we can and should look at ourselves in the light of how God sees us. We can transform our mindset and agree with what our Heavenly Father has to say about us, which brings us hope for the future. We can replace that negative self-talk with positive affirmations. I am a loved child of God. I am a new creature in Christ. I am blessed. My Heavenly Father knew me even before I was born, and I have spe a special purpose, a calling for my life. And as we deliberately choose to change our thoughts, our words, and our actions from negative self-loathing to those of positive, loving, kind, and good report, we can express our gratitude and praise. That's the next step. There are many scriptures to support our need to be grateful to the Lord for all that he's done for us, all that he's brought us through, for what we now have. Being thankful is an act of obedience to our creator. It's never a good idea to look around at others comparing ourselves with them. At any given time, we can always find someone who, who we might perceive as better than we are or looks better than we do, and talks better, or is more successful. It is only harmful to compare. And we are unique. We each have a specific purpose in life. We have a unique set of abilities, talents, gifts, and blessings from the Lord. We cannot be compared with another person. We are special in our own way. It's not quick and easy to undo a negative outlook that has been taken a long, long time to develop. Be patient with yourself as you strive to pursue the change in mindset and in your opinion about yourself. I mentioned praise. When we praise the Lord, rejoicing for what he's done for us, we are taking a stand with him and we find peace and joy even while we're struggling through trials and challenges in life. We're not alone. He is with us in it. The hardest step might be to forgive everyone. Whatever mistakes or sins or crimes that we may have done to support our self-loathing, when we turn to the Lord with a humble and contrite heart, He is forgiving. And if our Heavenly Father can forgive us, then we certainly should forgive ourselves. That makes sense. And we need to forgive others. We forgive those people who are mean-spirited, toxic, and maybe even abusive. They may be falling into comparing and condemning or judging. And in that, there's no reason to be concerned what another person has to think, say, or do about each of us. Negative, mean-spirited people make attempts to compare or to condemn, not realizing the fault in it. Maybe they're jealous, operating from deep-seated self-doubts themselves. Regardless of what the reasoning may be, for whatever angle they come from, we can choose to be merciful and to forgive. And we do this for our own soul's sake. If we don't forgive, then we know that we will be letting bitterness and anger fester inside us and keep ourselves toxic. But to forgive and to free ourselves, free our soul of it, we find peace, joy, and love. We forgive others because the Lord demands it. If we don't forgive them, then He will not forgive us. We may never trust those negative, toxic people again, but that has nothing to do with forgiveness. Trust and forgiveness are two entirely different matters. It may take a very, very long time to trust a person again who has been harmful to our well-being and sometimes we should never trust that person again. Well, as I indicated in the first step, as a follower of Jesus, I believe our first step is to admit 
our need for the Lord, and to humbly make that decision to turn to Him. He is our strength and refuge. We repent of that sinful life, admit that we need Him, and turn. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For in this we see God's ultimate sacrifice, His only begotten Son. Then we see how much He, very, he really loves us. Jesus said in John 14.6 I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. If we believe, then we tell the Lord that we believe and make a commitment to Him, and we develop a relationship. Do you have a relationship with Jesus today? It's a choice we make, a personal choice. I encourage you to say the sinner's prayer with me today. It's a step that a believer takes in pursuit of a relationship with the Lord. Please pray with me now out loud. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that Jesus is the only begotten Son, and Jesus suffered on the cross for me, for my sins, and He arose from the grave. But I'm a sinner. I ask You to forgive me. I repent of my sins. I walk away from them now. Please help me stand firm and not return to my sinful life. I need you, Jesus. I am hopeless without you. I ask you, Jesus, come into my heart now. Be my Lord and Savior, and I will serve you all of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. With this prayer, we're telling the Lord that we believe. We are choosing to walk away from that sinful life. We are pledging to serve him but also we're choosing to begin our relationship with the Lord. When we read and study the Word of God, when we pray, worship, and praise the Lord, we are developing a deeper and deeper relationship with Him. We can study passages like Ephesians 6 and learn how to put on the full armor of God and be prepared for that spiritual warfare that is happening all around us and, and enable us to fight off the demons of the world that are encouraging us to be half self-loathing in the first place. Without Jesus, we can do nothing, but with Jesus, we can. He will strengthen us. We know that trials will come, but we're not alone, and Jesus has already overcome. So from what we've covered in this episode, do we now have more supportive information, additional tools to consider, and how we can work on and change our attitude about ourselves and change away from self-loathing? We are well able to make that decision and to change self-loathing to a positive, loving attitude and mindset. With the Lord, we can. There are good counselors who can also help, and also it's a daily personal effort, even while we might be bombarded with negative challenges in life. We can keep from falling victim to our own attacks. Each time we're tempted to have negative thoughts or negative self-talk, we can replace it with positive affirmations, like some I gave today. Write them down ahead of time, put them on the wall. Practice saying them out loud. Have them ready. Start your day with prayer, praise, and gratitude for the Lord, and say positive affirmations. Stay clear of those negative, toxic people, and replace them with those that are peaceful, encouraging, and have a positive, lovely things to say. Well, I hope you have benefited from this episode on Turn to God with Karen. This is Karen Jane Casey, author, speaker, domestic violence advocate, and ambassador for Christ. Stay tuned for Turn to God with Karen every Monday morning at 6.30, also Abundant Living with Karen every Tuesday morning at 7, and then Moments of, with Karen every Wednesday morning at 7. That's C-A-R-I-N. Each of them are on Eastern Standard Time. 
You can download and listen anytime. And you can simply Google the podcast by name and find the listing of episodes on the internet. These podcasts are with stormtalk365radio.com. We're also available on iTunes, Twitter, Alexa on Amazon, hosted by iHeartRadio and Spotify. Our platform is Spreaker.com. My website is KarenJaneCasey.com, C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y. I would sincerely love any suggestions and feedback you might have. When you go to my website, you'll also see information about the books I've written and other helpful information. You can also go to Karen Jane Casey on YouTube and find videos of my podcast. If you do go there, please subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thank you and God bless.